Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and I'm going to do a couple of optimizations on the code I did for Advent of Code. I'm not going to do all of them, but I decided to just work on two and see if the ideas that I have actually will help out and if they do, how do they help out? So the first one I'm going to do is this idea with day 24. This is the one where, if I go to the tests here, where you have all these blizzards. Let me make this a little bit bigger here. You have these blizzards that are going in a direction and they continue to go in that direction. And the way I was doing this originally is that at every point I'm storing a list of chars and you either add or remove and if they're contained in there or not. What I wanna do is make the grid such that it is based on an enumeration. By the way, I don't know why Visual Studio does this sometimes where it gets to 99%. I'm like, just make it 100. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a little bit of an oddity, but I can tell, and I I'd rather just stay at a hundred. Anyway, so I was playing around in Sharp Lab, which I believe I have up here. Yep. So I have a Blizzard direction in and that's a flags, and I was just making sure that I've got it right. This isn't quite. This will work for what I need, which is you start with a location being none, and then you'll add in. If it, you know, originally just by doing a or, and then later on we'll figure out if it's not there, then we or it on. If it is there, then we'll X or it off. And that should seem to work, okay? So let me go back over here. And if I'm looking at my notes, we just, we wanna do the full input because one of these we can, but the other one, it's just it just takes too long and I wanna, make sure that my performance tests will actually finish in a reasonable amount of time. So we're gonna do this for get minimum minutes, except what we're gonna do is we're gonna create one called, let's see, where did it end up here? Get minute, no. Come on. Yeah, oh, that's right, because I compressed it down. So I'm gonna say optimized. Optimize, because that's better than saying two or ex2, okay? So the first thing we need to do is parse this. And we still need to read the input the way it is, except we're not gonna be making a list of char array. We're gonna be making a blizzard direction array. Okay, so we're gonna grab this. We're gonna put that down here, okay? And then we'll come up here and, sorry, let's get back to this. <laughs> too much code in here, too much code. So we're gonna go to parse first, okay? So we're gonna have a parse optimized, because why not? Okay. And this parse optimize is gonna, I can't spell. It's gonna be a new blizzard direction that, okay, which now means this has to change. And then we look through our inputs. And we don't have to do this anymore. And we say, if the line is not that. In fact, actually what we can say here is we can do grid of X and Y is equal to line of X switch, okay? Whoops, jeez. It's a Saturday and I can't spell. So we're gonna switch on, I believe that should be, well, that's gonna be a character. So we wanna say, if the character is this, then we return blizzard, blizzard direction right, okay? If it's going left, we say blizzard direction left. If it's going up, what's up? <laughs> is it a, it should be this, that character. Yeah, and it's a lowercase v, okay. Just wanted to make sure, want to make sure we had it right. So we go up is there, and we say bd dot up. And then the last one would be, well, second to last, I think, bd dot down. Now, if we get a, because I believe with the tests, you can also have a period in there. And that just means none, which it should be by default. We'll just handle that as a condition as well to say none. 
And then if we get to here, throw new unreachable exception, because we, there's no way we should ever be getting here. Those are the only five valid characters. And that takes care of the initialization. So that's that part. Now let's go to optimized. And when it's optimized, we now have a parse optimized, which now should throw things off, and for good reason, because now we want to make sure that we are using the, well, how do I want to say this? We don't want to use the list of chars anymore. Okay. So create new grid also should be that, except we don't need to optimize this one. Oh no. What we can do here is just say new blizzard direction of max x and max y. Okay. And now we do this, blizzards. Why is that, why is that a problem? Oh, it's a direction. Oh, so blizzards is a blizzard, right? It's, it's no longer a list of chars. And so we were getting a list of char here and saying, if it's going there, we go right. So we want to do has flag on all these is really what we want to do. So we want to say if blizzards, and it can have all four. So we have to do this for has flag, blizzard direction, come on, blizzard direction right. If it has that flag, then we go right. We don't have to add this. What we want to do is say new grid, da, 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 except adding we're going to say is equal to this again and or was a direction right. And I just want to check my sharp lab because if we want to add it, we want to or it in. Okay. And we're doing this because we're using the current grid and we're looking at if it's at this position and it's going right, we have to move it to the new grid, which pushes it over one. Okay. And now we have to do this for basically all four flags. Two, three, four. Okay. So we'll say left here, except we have to say go right, go left, and we need to have that correct. We can't just use that over again. That doesn't work. left. Now if we say up, we go up. And we'll change that to up and I will come back because we need to say this is going to be down. We need to say that is down and we're going down. Okay. Now let's get rid of some of this stuff here. Ah, that's right because we're doing a for each or four on every character that's in there. And we say, if it's that, then we do that. Then we look at the next character and we do that. Okay. So new grid going up is this expression. We do that and we do that. And then down is going down that way. Yeah, that's a lot of red, but we can see through the sea of red. That and that, and then we need to remove it at B. What does that mean? Remove, what were we doing in this? <laughs> so we're, we're adding to the new grid, the one, and then we have to go to where we currently are and remove that character. So we need to go here and say, Blizzard at B is equal to, oh, because B is an, okay, B is an index. Okay, so blizzards at B equals blizzards at B, and then we do an XOR of, wait a minute, what? No, 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 we're not in the right section here. Hold on. That's the good code. We want to go to the better code. <laughs> okay. So what we want to say here is, 
Ah, okay. So we have to be a little bit smarter than this. At each if statement, we need to say remove it if it's there. And we don't have a B. What we do have is a grid that this this is the character array. Let me pull this down here so I can see the difference here. We're looking at each character and then saying, okay, that character array, that list of chars, that's at a particular grid location. So we're just saying that's the blizzards there. And the blizzards come from the grid. So what we can say here now is say grid of X and Y which I'm not really sure why we do this because you're adding it to the, the addition goes onto the new grid. I'm just gonna do it and we have to remove it from the old grid. And so that does it. I, I, I kind of think we don't have to do these here, but we're just going to say, because the main savings in doing this should be that we're not doing hundreds if not thousands of little lists allocations and adding and removing it's all bit twiddling so hopefully that makes this better okay so we've made our new grid we've gone through the current grid we've looked at what's at that location the current grid because it can have all four flags we remove them and then we don't have to do this anymore and we set grid equal to new grid okay Check to see if the start position is open. If, ah, so we're saying if this is equal to blizzard direction none, that means we don't have any blizzards there. So now we can add a new expedition there. The same thing here. So we can say is equal to that. Yes, thank you IntelliSense. Thank you IntelliSense, you're winning. Not IntelliSense, IntelliCode. And there's probably just one more. Can it stay where it is? Ooh. Well, if it does not equal none. There, all done. We'll comment this code out because we don't need it anymore. We didn't need it anymore. I don't think we ever get to this pruning size because we did that duplication removal. So I don't think we even get into this, but we're gonna leave that the same. So all of this now should be the same of what we had before. So now this is in 24, so let's go to our tests. And this is minute optimization. So this should give us the same answer here, okay? Optimized. And now we say minimum minutes optimized. So this should be 18, it should give us the same answer. If it doesn't, we're in a, okay, it did. So that's good, <laughs> okay. Now, I'm gonna to come to day 24. Now this is actually gonna show you the answer. So if you if you don't wanna see the answer to the to day 24, that's the one we wanna do, because it's minimum ends. I wanna see, did the, does this do optimized? We're gonna do minimum ends, optimized. Oh, yeah. It, Ask me for what optimized. So this is gonna so if you don't want to see this, zoom ahead or something. So let's run this. Okay, they give the same answer. Just trust me, they do. <laughs> okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the day 24 input because we can take the whole thing and we're gonna put it in performance here. Okay. And we're gonna make sure that this copies always, good. And let's make a day 
24 tests. Okay. And we're going to have the memory diagnoser. I'm going to say day 24 tests. And we don't need any of this stuff. What we want to have is a get minimum minutes. Now, the way we do this is if we go to 24, is we're going to read all the lines in. But we're going to do that in the constructor public day 24 tests. And that's going to say this dot input is equal to file, which is that day 24 input. Fine. You don't know what that is. Let's make that a read only field. And that's perfectly fine. Okay. So now we don't need any of that. What we want to say is no, no. <laughs> Solution 24, get minimum minutes with this dot input. There. And what don't you like about that? Oh, it's a long. That's fine. Okay. And then we just need to repeat that. We're not going to do a baseline here. What we're going to say is make this optimized. Do that as optimized. And then we need to change this to being the startup and make the program here run day 24 tests. And we're done. So that should build. Now what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to stop recording altogether because I don't want Camtasia running when I do a perf test. So you won't know this, but I'm going to be stitching together a couple of actual different files of videos. So the end product is you, you would never know. But I'm actually going to stop Camtasia now. I'll run this, and then we'll see what the results are when it's finished. Okay, as you can see, the day 24 results are done. And yes, it does make a difference. It's 50% faster, and the allocations are also much less. We are doing 70 megabits of megabytes, I'm sorry, megabytes of allocations with the original approach, and we're only doing 24 now. If I thought about this, could you actually even get a, I think all these allocations are coming because we keep now making the list over and over again, like the, the grid. So if there could be a really cute way to not do this so that you could just use essentially one grid and somehow keep track of, you know, if you have to move a blizzard to the right, that you could just move it, but then when you look at that next location, you know, that may also have a blizzard there that's supposed to go to the right, or it doesn't. You see, that that's why I'm making these grids and new grids, because I'm thinking that's just easier because you can put the new state in a new grid, and then that becomes the next version of the grid. If there was a way to do this so that you wouldn't have to do that, that'd actually, I think, be ideal. But, you know, again, it is what it is. There's probably, I, th I think if we didn't do this either, that would take away a little bit of the, the, the performance because we wouldn't have to do those. I really don't think we need to do those, but that's neither here nor there. We're also, you know, making new expeditions every time. But that does show again that by doing those those uh, grids using a flags enumeration rather than a list of chars, we definitely decrease the perform. We, we definitely make the performance better. We make it faster and we also remove allocations. This isn't the end all, but again, I just wanted to try this and see what does it do? And yeah, it definitely helps. So let's move on to day 23, which is using the idea of parallel, that's right. I'm looking over here at my notes. I'm like, what were, what were we going to do again on day 24? Now, we can't use the input, the real one, because it just takes too long. And I'd rather see just with a smaller data set, you know, what the kind of performance change is. So if you look at day 24, let's get rid of 23 here because we don't need that up anymore. So we just got 24. And we can close my notes, I believe. Okay. So... 
Day 24. No, I did the wrong one. I, <laughs> I want day 23 up is what I want. So let's do SD23. Yeah. And do that. And then we'll also do SD23 and we'll get the tests up as well. Okay. So this is going to be the no movement turn. That's right. We could do this one as well. It doesn't matter. That's the same thing. What the idea is, is right now we're doing a for each loop and we're going through each elf. And each elf, basically in the make proposals, what that does is it says, well, given the list of elves that you have basically around me, what's my next proposal? And those are all independent. So the elf state will change, but the elves doesn't. And we'll just look at each elf and say, okay, their new proposal is going to be this. And so what we can do is the idea is, and get no movement turn optimized, is we're gonna do a parallel for each here, okay? So let's again do the dance. We're gonna copy this and copy that. And we're gonna make, go now there should be optimized, and this is probably gonna be now a async task of that. Thank you. And we're gonna name it async because you know we should. But the thing with this one is we shouldn't have to change any other code in terms of making other new functions. We should only have to be able to go here and say await parallel for each async. Okay. And the Hold on a second. Okay, I had to look up a couple examples because I was a little confused by what they what this means by source. And it's actually the elves. And then what we need to do is pass in a function of, well, it's not the source though. Well, the source, because it should be, oh, that's an I enumerable of the source. Okay, I'm sorry. But what we want to be sure is we're passing in elf and we don't need parallel options. We're just gonna assume the default for now. Wait, wait, what am I doing here? Source cancellation token. So we want to async this token And what we should be doing here is proposals make proposal on the elf given the elves. Now we are doing a closure, we're capturing state on the proposals. We could pass that all into the function. We could do it like a tuple here and say, pass all that in, but let's see what that does. Okay, so the proposals now are asynchronous. So if we go to our tests here, this is the no movement turn. So we wanna find get no, well, let's just go there. And we're gonna change this, well not change it, we're going to make an async version of this. Async task optimized async. So we come down here and we say optimize async and we say await here. And that should also be 20. Should be in the operative word. And it is, okay. So that didn't break anything, which is good. Now we want to again see how fast this is. So let's go back to our, we want to do day 23 here. Day 23 tests our input this time is going to be this so we're going to capture that and so we're going to say our input is equal to that and it's not 24 it's 23 okay and so now we have day 23 and we're going to say Oh, come on. Oh, what is the problem here? 
just do 23. Thank you. You don't need 24. 23, get no movement turn, which returns along, okay? Off of the input. Now what we're gonna have is a sync. Now, can you mix these? That's gonna be the interesting thing. A sync task of long, give me a minimum, get, just copy, and that optimize a sync. Is this actually, go and then we need to await it. Is this actually gonna work from a benchmark perspective? Wait, so let's go to the program here. Let's say make that 23. Let me just run it quick, see if it doesn't puke on this or not. Okay, it seemed to work, and as I was thinking about it, I'm like, why wouldn't it? Because you could have one returning a task or not, and and you didn't handle that just fine, so why wouldn't that handle it just fine? The one thing I did think of is if it really was going to be a bear about it, I could have made this return a task of long, or this is just task from result, or make it a value task to be even a little bit better, um, but it doesn't seem to bother get bothered by it. What we're really concerned about, or what we really should be caring about is that this is faster because we're able to use threads. So let's see what this does. All right, so everything ran. And as we can see, we definitely gained some performance because we're able to do more work in parallel. It's interesting to note that the allocations are slightly more. That kind of makes sense because I'm assuming parallel for each async has to do a little bit more underneath the scenes to, to handle stuff. We could also play with the parallel options here. I, I, I did not do anything there with passing that in. Like if I say var, var options is equal to new parallel options. And there are things like cancellation, max degree of parallelism gets a sense of, you know, it, what's, what's the default? I have no idea. You know, what, what would be the default? Well, let's see what F12 gives us. It sets it to minus one that there's no upper bound set on how many how much parallelism should be employed. Just max it out. <laughs> that works for me, and that's fine. So again, what's what's interesting again with this one is unlike the day twenty four one, where we we didn't have to be. I guess it depends on what you mean by cute, but we had to be a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to use the word cute. I couldn't come up with a better word. But we had to do some flag enumeration, which isn't hard. It's just it, 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 it arguably wasn't as straightforward as the list was in my head, but it works just fine, reduces allocations, and it makes it faster. This one was actually even nicer in a way because we were able to just change one line of code, do this. It's basically the same thing. Now, there is a trade-off here apparently by what we saw with the results because it takes a little bit more memory. But it does make it run faster. So that's one of the advantages of here if you have a for each loop that's doing stuff where it's all in parallel, you could make it in parallel, just use for each and now there's a for each async so it's not gonna block, the task doesn't block on the, on the return. So that's kind of nice, gotta like that. So yeah, um, I'm gonna leave it at this for the optimizations I do on all the, Evan of code stuff. I'm sure I could optimize a lot of these things even more and do a lot more work on them. But these were just a couple that I took some notes on and it was fun to do this little excursion and see what I came up with in terms of what's coming up in the future. I don't know, but there's always a ton of stuff that I can dive into and take a look at and have some fun with. So thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.